Welcome back to Anton's class. In today's video, we will be discussing ethnic or racial diversity in ancient Egypt, and we will decide if there is the possibility that perhaps there were two distinct racial or ethnic identities coexisting in ancient Egypt. But first and foremost, we need to remember that the kingdom we now know as ancient Egypt used to be made up of various gnomes, or city-states. These city-states were divided between two regions known as Upper and Lower Egypt. Upper Egypt was in the south and bordered Nubia, and Lower Egypt was actually in the north and bordered the Mediterranean Sea and the Levant. Is it possible that one ethnic group inhabited Lower Egypt while another ethnic group inhabited Upper Egypt? Well, for starters, there is a strong possibility that the spoken dialect of Upper Egypt was different than the spoken dialect of Lower Egypt, so much so that they may have been mutually unintelligible. We do know that the official written language was a member of the Afro-Asiatic language family. The large majority of Afro-Asiatic language varieties are presently spoken throughout Africa, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa. There is strong supporting evidence that Nile Valley civilization started in the south of Egypt, for example at Nabta Playa, an ancient site from around 6,000 years ago with megalithic astronomical alignments, walk down water wells, and signs of cow veneration, foreshadowing the deified cow of ancient Egypt. It is also worth noting that the inhabitants of Nabta Playa were black African. In the first cataract area, a group material culture was present within the Cadian sites. In Upper Egypt, a group pottery was often documented in pre-dynastic sites, including Nakata, El Adaima, El Mamaraya, and Hierakonopolis. A group is the name given to a cultural complex of ancient Nubia. The unification of Upper and Lower Egypt was solidified with a man known as Menes, or Narmer, a ruler with origins in Upper Egypt. This stone sculpture of his face suggests strong affinities with other black Africans. Ancient Egyptian stature and limb proportions also show that they tended to have strong affinities to African populations from the tropics. When drawing comparisons to modern populations, Ancient Egyptians have been referred to as Super Negro. As a matter of fact, ancient Egyptians are closer in body proportion to modern American blacks than they are to American whites. mummies from the Amarna period in ancient Egypt have genetic STR profiles that clearly cluster with sub-Saharan Africans, particularly from the Great Lakes region around Uganda, Burundi, and Rwanda, which would include tribes such as the Tutsi and Hutu people, as well as with southern Africans, which would include Bantu tribes like the Shona, the Zulu, and the Debele. These mummies also show genetic affinities with western Africans from around the region of the Cameroon. Ramses III clusters with sub-Saharan Africans in a similar manner. And, in regards to the pharaoh Akhenaten, his autosmal ancestry marker, like most of the Amarna family's group's DNA, is clearly African in origin. But what about the ancient Egyptian art that seemingly depicts people with non-black features? And what about the mitochondrial DNA obtained at Abu Sir al Melik? which showed Levantine DNA. Well, we know that coastal North Africa was inhabited by ancient populations associated with Near Eastern Levantine peoples. We also know that Lower Egypt at times had substantial non-African Levantine populations. Besides the Levantine populations and earlier Near Eastern components, which would of course include Egypt's Hebrew occupants, there were later immigrants from Greece and various parts of the Roman Empire. The Fayyum in particular saw a substantial growth in its population during the first hundred years of Ptolemaic rule, presumably as a result of Greek immigration. 
Later in the Roman period, many veterans of the Roman army, who initially at least were not Egyptian, but people from disparate cultural backgrounds, settled in the Fayum area after the completion of their service, and formed social relations and intermarried with local populations. Importantly, there is evidence for foreign influence at Abu Sid al Malik. Individuals with Greek, Latin, and Hebrew names are known to have lived at the site. So we see that there were some non-African populations moving into the region of Lower Egypt at various times throughout its history. It is important to remember, however, that the primary drivers of indigenous Egyptian culture and societal development had origins in Upper Egypt and further south. It has also been observed that ancient Egyptians of the elite ruling class are more closely related to Nubian populations than their non-elite counterparts. So although there is clear evidence of multiple populations coexisting in ancient Egypt, it would appear that the ruling elite class of Egypt often practiced endogamy, preserving a stronger affinity with the Nubians or the black populace of the Nile Valley.